Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Just want to let you know this video is sponsored by Squarespace. You guys already know that Squarespace provided my website, www.7mlctraining.com. So that's where you guys get your programs, the blog posts and everything. So I really appreciate them supporting the channel. If you have ever considered building your own website, check out the link in my description, www.squarespace.com slash 7mlc, and you can get 10% off your first website. So go and check that one out. But welcome back to another video. Hope everyone's doing really well. It's been a little while since I've done one of these with everything going on. Obviously it's an interesting time for all of us. Most of us are stuck inside. Here in New York we can still go outside and exercise if we want to. We have to stay by ourselves. There's a lot of shops and everything closed down so it is a little bit of a weird time. Spending pretty much at least 90% of my day in my house. Sometimes I'll get out for a run by myself or go to the pitch and get some touches. But other than that, spending a lot of time in the house, so I'm trying to be as productive as possible inside my house, doing a lot on 7MRC training, and generally just trying to be as active as I possibly can. So hopefully you guys are using this time wisely as well. But I just thought I'd kind of let you know what my schedule is like during this time. Also, Yes, the office is set up. That's where I'm sitting right now. So you guys who tuned into the last episode where we just moved in here, we were getting everything set up, but now we actually have kind of set up most of the apartment. But this is the office that I'm sitting in. So this is where I'm editing all my videos, doing my podcast that you guys listen to. So this is what my typical week of training looks like. I'll usually get up around eight o'clock, make my coffee, come into my office, check my emails and everything like that. And then at 9 a.m. every morning, I'm doing ball mastery for 10 minutes. Minutes. And once I've done with my ball mastery, I'll come back up and I'll have breakfast, usually around 9.30 or something like that. On a Monday at 11am, I'll go into the basement and I'll do a technical session, so a lot of passing off the wall, getting touches on the ball, juggling, lots of different technical work. So today is a technical day, so I'm going to show you everything I do in that workout. And then I'll come back upstairs about 12.30 and have lunch. Then at 2pm, I usually drive over to an empty pitch when no one's training, it's the worst pitch I've ever been on in my life. I'll show you guys later on. It's really bad. But it's great because no one else trains on there so I can get some extra touches in. A couple of sprints because that's pretty much the only thing I can't do inside. But then on Tuesdays, same thing. 10 minutes of ball mastery in the morning, breakfast. Then I'll go to the gym at 11 again, but this time I'm doing weights and I'm doing lower body. Pretty light day on a Tuesday. Then Wednesday, again, it's gonna be a technical day, so it's exactly the same as Monday, pretty much. Then on a Thursday, ball mastery in the morning, then I'll go down to the gym and do upper body. I'm gonna show you each individual day in a video. Today is a technical day, as I've mentioned, but I will show you what I do for my lower body day, what I do for my upper body day. Friday, another technical day. Then on a Saturday, I start with my ball mastery, as all the other days. And then I go down to the gym, but I'm doing all body weight stuff. So it's a full body workout just using my body weight. I know a lot of you will be interested in that in case you don't have gym equipment, weights and things like that. And then on a Sunday, it is rest day, but I still do my ball mastery in the morning because as I said, it's not intense, but a good way to keep getting touches every day so you stay sharp. It's not loads of training, but enough to keep me fit, keep me getting touches on the ball because we never know when football's going to return. So you don't just want to completely take this time off. Do as much as you can with whatever you have available to you in your house. But that's my schedule. I know a lot of you have been asking for it, so that's pretty much what it looks like. So just going to relax here, finish my coffee, respond to some emails and things like that. Then we'll get downstairs and do some ball mastery. All right, so down in the basement, about to get into my ball mastery. Today we are doing Maestro Day 2. So those of you who have gotten the full program, you would have done Maestro Day 2. Day 1 is up for free on the channel, I'll link it right here if you want to do a workout every morning. It's about 10 minutes long, so each day has 7 ball mastery exercises and then we finish with a ball mastery combination where we take some of the exercises we did in that day and we piece them together in a little bit of a combination. So you can actually take today's exercises and then you've pretty much got day two of the program as well. So you can just write them down. We do each exercise for a minute straight. I'm using a size three today. Sometimes I'll do that just so you focus on the smaller surface area. When you're working with a size five and then you reduce the size of the ball, you have to work a little bit harder mentally because you're focusing on a smaller surface area. And when you do some touches with the smaller ball and then return to the size five, your control feels even sharper. Let's get some touches.
So just got done with the ball mastery. As you can see, getting thousands of touches there in just 10 minutes. So imagine doing this every day on top of your other training as well. In less than 10 minutes, an extra thousand touches. Do it seven days a week, that's 7,000 extra touches that you just got. So if you do that regularly, you're just gonna feel so much more sharper on the ball. So it doesn't take much effort. As you can see, only just breaking a sweat because so we're not doing it for long, it's not that intense, you're pretty much just in the same spot, you're just using your control, manipulation of the ball to do these ball mastery moves. So I'm gonna go upstairs and make some breakfast, and I'm hungry, so let's go. So what I'll typically have for breakfast, and sometimes it'll change, sometimes we'll have oatmeal or something, but really like to have omelets, what do we have? Probably two, three times a week we have omelets, just because it's so easy to get so much nutrition in there. Obviously you're getting a lot of protein from the eggs, you can throw so many different things in and it always tastes good. Throw onions in, garlic in, some greens, you can throw peppers. You can get so much of your nutrition in there. So this is an easy breakfast. We'll put four eggs in. So I'll have two to three eggs depending on how much Becca eats and how much I eat. But just an easy way to get a lot of vitamins, minerals, protein. It's just a good all-round breakfast and I'll have this with a cup of tea and some water. Sometimes I'll get asked if I take any supplements, so I always treat supplements in addition to nutrition, not in replacement. So don't think this is good enough for you. You should be trying to have a healthy diet and then this on top, just those little boosters. Kind of like the ball mastery, you're not gonna just do ball mastery as you're training, it's a supplement to your all round training. So you need to get the bulk of your training, get all your touches in and everything, and then the ball mastery is that little boost just to take it to the next level. That's what I treat supplements as. I'm trying to get as much nutrition from my actual diet, then I have little supplements on top just to keep me healthy, especially during this time as well. So multivitamin, then I'll have calcium and magnesium, good for your strong bones, helps you sleep. And then vitamin C, just for the immune system, easy one. Then also I have fish oils, that's just really good for your joints, good for your brain, you know, omega freeze in there. So that's the only supplements I take. Let's be honest, mates. That looks good, doesn't it? I'm just gonna have some green tea. Decaf, because I already had my coffee, as you guys saw. Tea's a really easy way to hydrate as well, and it's good for you. Green tea has lots of antioxidants. Green tea has a lot of antioxidants. <laughs> so this is the difference here. That is one eaten omelette. <laughs> Becca's had four bites, so this is literally every I single wouldn't. meal together. How's it taste though? 10 out of 10? 20 out of 10. Whoa. So yeah, just gonna relax for a little bit. This is a good time where I'll usually edit my videos if I have any videos that need editing. And then in about an hour from now, after I've digested my breakfast, we're gonna get downstairs and we'll get that technical session in.
that's the technical session done downstairs. As you can see, really basic stuff. The absolute fundamentals, a lot of just passing, receiving, first touch, bit of juggling, really easy stuff there. But it's so important to keep these sharp. You need to keep those fundamentals as clean as possible. And it's a good sweat. Those are droplets of sweat. So you do get a little bit of a workout in as well. Obviously it's not really intense, but you're getting that heart rate up, which is good. I will be doing some fitness work on the treadmill on my conditioning day. So my lower body strength day, my upper body strength day, and my body weight day. I have a specific treadmill workout that I'm doing to keep my fitness up. I'm gonna show you those in those sessions on those separate days. Good little session there. We're gonna get out to the pitch in a couple hours, but now I'm gonna go upstairs and have some lunch. So this is what's on the menu for lunch. We've got red cabbage, falafel, we've got soup, which has chickpeas, plenty of vegetables, carrots, cabbage, and then I'm gonna be having my water. So that's lunch. So just gonna relax in my office for a little bit, let my food digest again before I go out, do a little bit more training. This weather is being ridiculous. So it looks like it's sunny right now, but literally, Five minutes ago, it was snowing, and that is snow on the ground there, so don't know what to predict. But I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk more about Squarespace, because they have kindly offered to sponsor this video. So this is my website that I created through Squarespace. A lot of you have already been on it. If you've got any of my programs, if you've read any of my blogs, if you haven't read them already, you might be interested in reading through these. I've got a few new podcasts up as well that you guys might want to listen to. Also, you can actually connect with me. I know a few of you have done this already, but if you have any questions for me, the best way to get in touch is this. I get a lot of Instagram DMs and I do my best to get back to them when I can, but this is the best way because it comes straight through to my email. As you can see, very professional looking website and I wouldn't have been able to do this without Squarespace because I know nothing about coding. I would have no idea how to put these images and make it kind of the text move as I scroll like this. I also linked all my channels, so I not only just have a YouTube channel, but I do have the podcast, I have an Instagram page as well. You can get to it through here. But like I said, I know nothing about web design at all, but thanks to Squarespace, I was able to create this. So if you've ever thought about creating your own website, if you've got a brand, a business, anything, make sure you check out Squarespace and use my link that will be in the description. It's www.squarespace.com slash 7MLC. We're just gonna relax here for a little bit, and yes, I am having my second coffee of the day and then we'll get out to the pitch and I'll show you guys what I've been doing when I get out there. So let's go. Whew. It's absolutely freezing, but I'm out of the pitch and have a look at this field. Definitely not been mowed in a while. Over there we have what's left of maybe a bird. <laughs> There's a lot of those rocks, but I'm not gonna complain. I'm coming to this pitch because as you can see, no one else wants to use it, and I want to train alone for obvious reasons. Still a good place to get some touches. I know for a fact there's a lot worse. I feel very lucky to have this. As of right now, we're still allowed to come out and train or exercise by ourselves, and that could be taken away at any moment. Who knows, we might go into an actual lockdown where we're not allowed to leave our homes. So while we can, I'm gonna take full advantage of it. I'm gonna get some touches off this wall, some bigger touches off this wall. I'm gonna kick it onto it in my first touchdown. And then I'm gonna get a few runs with the ball because that's something I can't work on at home. I can't really sprint with the ball. And I'm just gonna get a few shots, a few basic shots, curls, volleys, just a few strikes in. So I'm looking forward to it. Don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's actual snowflakes. Can you see those little snowflakes? Snowing in April. Anyway, enough complaining. Let's get some work in. work massive puddle let's relocate so I thought I'd give you a voiceover just to walk you through some of the drills give you an idea of the reps and sets and the reason behind each of the activities I do in this session so just beginning with some basic first touch as you can see a little bit of a greater distance than what I have at home in my basement so just working on getting the touch out of my feet a bit more in my basement I was working on keeping the ball really tight to me working with that small space now I'm just opening up a little bit, getting some turns in there too. And this one, the ball bounces up a little bit more. So it's a little bit more unpredictable as you'll see at times. So just testing my touch a little bit more, keeping that nice and sharp. So I probably went through this for like five minutes or something like that. I didn't count the reps. I just went through until I felt like I was satisfied, but I don't think it was any more than five minutes in total. And then I went over to the larger wall that I pointed out. So all I'm doing here is flicking the ball up, volleying it at the wall. 
and then just trying to receive it however it comes. So I might take it with the laces, the inside of the foot, the outside of the foot, just working on that aerial ball control. Again, not something I can really work on at home effectively. I can obviously keep it up against the wall. I can work on my juggling, but this way I can really work on receiving it and testing myself with the weight of the ball, having to adjust and stay on my toes because sometimes the ball will bounce unpredictably off the wall. So it's just a little bit more advanced than my home workout just to keep my touch nice and sharp during this time. So again, I probably spent five minutes on this, not any longer than that. All I'm doing is getting the ball under control and then flicking it back up again and just going for maybe 20 to 25 reps or something like that. I'm not out on the pitch for long. I'm just putting in a little bit of extra work. This entire session probably lasted 45 minutes tops. So making sure I test myself with different areas of my foot because the ball reacts differently off those different surface areas. So it's good to keep them all sharp if you possibly can. And then once I was done with my first touch work, I just got a couple of shots. So I moved out to the left hand side, almost like an inverted winger. All I'm doing is very simply pushing the ball out of my feet. This one is not intense at all. I'm just keeping that striking technique sharp. Then I went out on the right hand side and I'm pulling out a little move, a little 1v1 move, a little change of speed. As you can see, I approach really slowly, just push the ball out, quick acceleration, and then driving the ball across the goal, trying to hit that bottom corner. And then after a few reps, I moved into just literally shifting the ball out and driving it across goal. So instead of exploding, all I'm doing is taking one touch and shooting from a little bit of a further distance. So just getting that striking technique down. As you can see today, I'm just working on the right foot pretty much. So on my technical days, I will divide it up. One day I'm gonna work on my right foot. Another day I'll work on my left foot. Because I have this time, we don't have matches coming up. I can really dedicate time to working on each foot individually and seeing which areas of my non-dominant foot are weak compared to my dominant foot. Then I just went into some basic volley. So just simply flicking the ball up, driving the ball at the goal. Just simple volleying techniques, trying to keep those sharp. Just went through maybe 10 reps in total and then as I said I wanted to work on running with the ball so all I'm doing is kicking the ball up in the air getting my first touch down and then just dribbling the ball at the goal changing my direction and you'll see the ground is so bobbly at times it looks like the ball has popcorn in it it is really difficult to control but I enjoy that challenge if you can control the ball on pitches like this when it comes back to football season and you're working on nicer pitches you're gonna find it even easier so if you can make your training even more difficult you're gonna find it easier during a match. So I just literally went through this one three times. Look at the ball bouncing around there. That's difficult to control, but good work. Just getting a good run in. And then I just got some sprints in up the hill at the end. So all I'm doing is using this little incline that I've found at the side of the pitch. And I'm going through five reps. So I sprint up the hill, walk back down, do that five times. Then I rest and repeat that twice. So I'm getting 10 reps in total with a rest at five repetitions. So a bit explosive work. Obviously, this is something I can't do at home either. I can go on my treadmill, but it only goes up to a certain speed limit. So I'm really just trying to open up a little bit, challenge myself, burn the legs, and keep my explosive muscle fibers nice and sharp through this time. So if you've never done hill sprints before, I would fully recommend them. Not only are they really intense, so obviously, as we said before, the more you ramp up the difficulty of your training, the easier things become when it comes to match day. The same with your running technique. It's kind of like going in the gym. If you're lifting heavy weights, your muscles are gonna grow and adapt and become stronger. So this is kind of like lifting weights for your sprinting technique. That's the way I describe it. You're making it even more challenging so you become even more explosive. But not only that, when you're running uphill, you really have to drive your arms powerfully because it is so difficult. So you're working on that running technique. Not only is it important to have strong muscles, but having correct technique with running makes you even faster. And I think that's where a lot of people's pace is lost. They're doing all the speed training in the world, but their technique is lacking. So they're not driving their arms in synchronization with their feet. So as you can see, really driving my arms from basically the tip of my chin to my pocket with my arms. So really powerful driving back and forward with both arms, driving my right arm as my left leg is driving and vice versa. So really recommend giving hill sprints a go if you've never tried it. Just do this a couple times a week and you'll see huge improvements to your explosive speed, especially off the mark, because you're really having to claw up the hill and drive those knees up. It really helps you over those first 10 yards. So just going through my last couple of repetitions here, but this is a really good workout. Literally just doing two sets of five and you feel that burn in your legs. 
Look at this, mates. Filthy. The missus will not be happy. Good training session. Now I'm gonna go home, get some dinner, and then just got the rest of the night to relax. So let's go home. Back home and showered. Got the slippers on, so you know it's time for some serious chilling. Let's go see what Mrs. Cunningham is making for dinner. Salmon? What have we got over there? Quinoa. Quinoa? What about in there? Carrots. Got some carrots and other vegetables. What an angel. But that's gonna be it for this day in the life episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Just wanted to show you kind of how I'm structuring my training during this abnormal time. I know it's a little bit strange for all of us because usually as a footballer, we're used to training for a certain deadline, whether we're getting ready for preseason, whether we're getting ready for playoffs, or if we're just getting ready for the next match, we're always structuring our training around that pretty much. But right now we don't have matches in the foreseeable future, a lot of us have had our leagues postponed or cancelled and so the training right now is a little bit different because we're trying to maintain fitness, trying to stay sharp but we're not trying to be match fit because we don't have a match in the foreseeable future and when the leagues resume we're going to have a little bit of time to get ready for them so right now it's just all about maintaining your fitness to a certain extent but more so just get a lot of touches in, stay sharp so that when things get back to normal which will hopefully be soon you're not going to feel too rusty. You're going to be able to come right back into training and get after it once again. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys are all doing well and staying sharp, staying productive during this time. Feel free to drop any questions below that you might have and I'll try and get back to them as soon as I possibly can. But thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos and I'll see you guys in my next video.